You can't build a successful business on your own. You need to have good people. In this module, you'll learn how to recruit, train, and motivate good people to help you grow your business. To succeed in your business, you need to employ the best possible people you can afford. You want people that are motivated, you want people with the right attitude, and you want people that are going to help you improve what you are doing. Before you employ somebody, you need to have a plan. Have a clear idea of what this person will do. Develop a job description. I encourage you to do this whether you're employing somebody full-time, whether you're employing them part-time, or using a consultant. You want a very clear idea of what you want this person to do. The hours of operation, when they're going to be working, their responsibilities, and what qualifications and experience will this person need to have. So the more detail you have, the better it is. Their people skills are very important, so you need to think about this and write it down. Where do you find good people? In small business, we often go to our peers. We speak to other small business owners or people we know, and we say things like, I'm looking for an accountant, or I'm looking for a lawyer, or I'm looking for a good web designer, or I'm looking for an employee. This is often where we go. And this is often your best source of finding good people. Your employees, ask them, do they know somebody that can fill that job? Your network, reach out to your network, speak to other small business owners, speak to your peers, they can help you fill a position. Look on websites and social media. There are so many out there nowadays that make it easy for us to find the right person. Go to your competitors and offer their best employees a job. Not my favorite way to recruit people, but you know what, this may be your only option. And speak to local government organizations. So there's a lot of sources of finding good people. The key thing when you're looking for people is you've got to focus on the advantages of working for a small business. Flexibility, hours, being able to make important decisions, participate in decisions being made, all those things are some of the key benefits. And never forget to share these with new employees. When you're interviewing people, you want to try and make sure that you get what you're looking for. You want to try and understand, is this person motivated? Are they goal-orientated? Are they self-managed? These are some of the things that we're looking for when we employ people. So ask them, why do they want this job? What are their goals and dreams, especially if you're looking for somebody that is motivated maybe to generate sales? You want to try and identify what their goals and dreams are. What do they think they can contribute to your business? And this is one of the most important questions. If we give you the job, what can you do for us? How will they deal with the situation? Give them a case study. Give them a scenario, a common scenario in your business, and ask them how they will deal with it. You want people that are problem solvers. How have they dealt with this problem in the past or this challenge in the past? Give them another scenario and ask them to explain. And ask them what have been their most significant accomplishments in their previous jobs. You're trying to find out as much as possible about the person and, more importantly, what they can do for your business. In small business, we employ people to help us grow our business. While you're interviewing somebody, remember I mentioned earlier on, whether it's a consultant, whether it's a part-timer, or whether it's an employee, you've got to think about this as you're speaking to the person. Do they have the right attitude? And this is very important in small business. You want people with the right attitude. This is very difficult to teach. Do they have similar values and principles? For example, if recycling or the environment... If these things are very important in the core of your business, you want people that have similar values and principles. Will they fit in with a company culture? Maybe because you're a small business, you're more relaxed and laid back. Will they fit in with us? Do they have the right business skills and people skills? And are they teachable? Key thing, you want to employ people that are teachable and prepared to learn your way. So as you're interviewing somebody, Keep these things in mind, whether it's a new accountant, a new lawyer, an employee, a contractor. Think about this as you're interviewing them. Let's go back to employees. What do employees want? 
Somebody's coming to work with you. What do they want? They want to work in a friendly, caring environment. They want to know that you care about them. They want to be paid a fair wage. Ensure that you pay your people fair wages. They want to be recognized for good work. When somebody does something good, you want to be patting them on the back. They want fair management. Be very, very careful of treating people well. I think your basic rule in business should be treat people as well as you would like to be treated. Be fair. They want to participate in decisions that affect them. And this is one of the key advantages of actually working in a small business is that you often participate. They want to make a meaningful contribution and they want clear expectations. So if you understand these basic needs of employees, this is going to help you become a better employer and have happy employees because that's what you want. Happy employees are going to give your customers great service. When you've employed somebody, there are a couple of details you need to get in place. And small business owners aren't the best at details. So I encourage you to spend a little bit of time on this. Every employee that you employ needs a contract of employment. Speak to your lawyer, give them a couple of guidelines, and let them ensure that it's legal. Listing their compensation, their job description, if you can offer them any benefits, you want to list it very clearly. List your expectations so the person understands and you understand. Once they've signed their contract, you can put it away and start operating. Once you've hired somebody, there are a couple of steps that you need to take that are really important and I think could improve how they work for you and help how they help you grow your business. So start off by telling them about your business vision. Sit them down the first couple of days and speak about your vision. Make sure that they understand what business you want to build. Speak about your company values and principles. What's important to you? They need to understand this and they need to believe in it. And what are your company rules and policies? You don't want them to find out from other employees. You want to make sure that you set the stage. Very clear. This is our vision. These are our company values. These are the rules and policies in this company. Once you've done that, Go the next step is introduce them to their co-workers, key customers and any suppliers, especially if they're going to be uh, speaking to customers and suppliers on a regular basis. Another tip is to assign them a mentor or coach. Usually if you're a small business owner, you are their mentor or you are their coach. Encourage them to come to you for guidance, for direction, so that you can help them through their process. Encourage them to ask questions. Say to them, the more questions you ask, the better it is. And invest the time to train and educate them. This is going to make them more motivated and it's going to make them better employees. How do we keep people motivated? I've employed you. You had the right attitude. You had the right skills. How do I keep you motivated? The first thing is ask your employees what motivates them. If I'm a single mother, giving me two hours off on a Wednesday afternoon is more important than giving me a gift card for $10 to a coffee shop. So ask your employees what motivates them. Some people are motivated by money, but not everybody's motivated by money. Ensure that you schedule a regular performance appraisal. Every 90 days, sit down with your employees, discuss the last 90 days, what's gone well, what's not gone so well, what goals have they achieved, and then over the next 90 days, what are their goals, what would they like to achieve, what would they like to learn? And it really helps them keep focused and it ensures that your employees are improving and becoming better employees and contributing to the growth of your business. You need to learn to listen to your staff. Spend time regularly sitting them just down, asking how things are going. The better your relationship with them is, the better they're going to treat your customers and they're going to help you grow your business. Develop a caring attitude. I encourage you to care about everybody that works for you or works with you. They're going to try harder if you're treating them really well and be likable and have fun. This is one of the big advantages we have in small business is we can create a fun environment where everybody likes coming to work. That is your responsibility. As your business grows, you want to build a, you want to build a great team. 
You want to build a great team of motivated people. Your job is to lead these people. So as your business grows, you want to work on your business rather than in your business. You want to have these people that you delegate to on a regular basis. Look for people that bring a skill or talent that will strengthen your business, that will help you grow your business. Try and find the weaknesses and try and identify people that can help you grow that part of your business. So if you're not good at the admin, bring in an accountant. If you're not good at the marketing, bring in a marketer. If sales is not your strength, maybe bring in a salesperson. But you need to get a good team that can help you build your business. What do great leaders do? Great leaders focus on the business vision and the goals. They really like a conductor of an orchestra. They out there encouraging, motivating, and sharing their vision and goals with everybody that works with them. Your job is to inspire people. You want to develop relationships with your employees, your partners, if you have any, your customers. It's important that we build relationships with our customers and our suppliers. All of these people are an important part of that equation. They're going to help you grow your business. If you have a good relationship with your employees, they're going to perform better. If you have a good relationship, an open relationship with your partners in business, this is going to help you grow your business. If your customers feel like they're part of this organization, part of this team, that you care about them, they're going to keep buying from you and they're going to refer you. And even your suppliers, your suppliers are an important part of your business. For example, if you have contractors, these people will often be doing work for you. You need to have a good relationship, then they're going to try harder. And also keep innovating. Think of it nowadays, we have to keep innovating. Things are changing so fast. So as leaders, we have to be creative and we have to innovate on an ongoing basis. So let's just summarize. Plan before you employ anybody. Think about exactly what they're going to do, what skills they need, what qualifications they need, and what your expectations are. Develop interview questions. Write them down. Maybe 10 questions that you ask at every interview. Employ people with a great attitude. Friendly, caring people that want to make a difference. Motivate your staff on a regular basis. Encourage them. Acknowledge when they do something really good. Give them the recognition that they often want. Become a great leader. Your job is to lead, to work on the business, grow the business, and build a great business. I encourage you to do this exercise. Develop a list of people or consultants you will employ and list their job functions. This is important in the startup phase because you need a lot of guidance and advice. A lawyer, an accountant, maybe a couple of business owners you can meet on with a regular basis, small business advisors, all these people are important and they're going to help you grow your business. Identify advisors you will contact to help you manage your business. So really, come up with a list of people that you can go to on a regular basis that can help you by giving you advice, by giving you direction, and sharing their experience with you. You want to have good people around you. Have any questions, need more, more advice and guidance, contact people at Enterprise Toronto. They will help you. But go out there, find good people to work with, create an environment where people want to do their best, and they're going to help you grow your business.